Welcome to Fortune Forecast. I am Daisy Grisler, your hostess. And we are going through William Walter Atkinson's Thought Vibration or The Law of Attraction in the Thought World. This book was published by the New Thought Publishing Company in 1906. It is in the public domain. We are about to take this plane in for a landing and I will share with you something personal. This last chapter really, really touched me because I reflected on what Atkinson was saying about why is it that some of us don't ask for more, don't reach for more. When it's there, why do we just want to take this little bit? Because I struggled with that thought, that idea. And and I don't know. I mean, it, it really, really was uh, very intense for me because it took me back to my childhood. I grew up with my grandparents and both my grandparents were farmers and there was always so much at home there was always so much food and so much everything there was never lack of and it was interesting because there was a time when i was with my parents as a little girl they must have struggled and they did my father had suffered an accident and he was the breadwinner and there was no no income coming in and those desperate moments i think that i in my mind i never forgot them and so i'm even to this day I have to catch myself and I can't believe I'm actually sharing this with you that I believe that that stayed with me and I would always choose what costs less and just because I remember how my parents struggled Ugh. and I'm so happy I read this chapter have we forgotten that we are children of a divine heavenly father that there is an abundance of infinity and eternity and that we can enjoy the things here and to not be slave to them and to be willing to let them go when he calls us oh that was an intense chapter i really appreciated that reminder and if you like me had some experience that you didn't think that you deserved more i invite you take my hand because I am ready to receive all the goodness and all that God has for me. I am willing to be like a child to enter his garden. So for as long as we can, let's play together. Are you willing? Let's go on to chapter 16. Law, not chance. Some time ago, I was talking to a man about the attractive power of thought. He said that he did not believe that thought could attract anything to him, and that it was all a matter of luck. He had found, he said, that ill luck relentlessly pursued him, and that everything he touched went wrong. It always had, and always would, and he had grown to expect it, when he undertook a new thing, he knew beforehand that it would go wrong and that no good would come of it. Oh no, there wasn't anything in the theory of attractive thought. So far as he could see, it was all a matter of luck. This man failed to see that his own confession, he was giving a most convincing argument in favor of the law of attraction. He was testifying that he was always expecting things to go wrong and that they always came about as he expected. He was a magnificent illustration of the law of attraction, but he didn't know it and no argument seemed to make the matter clear to him. He was up against it and there was no way out of it. He always expected the ill luck and every occurrence proved that he was right and that the mental science position was all nonsense. There are many people who seem to think that the only way in which the law of attraction operates is when one wishes hard, strong and steady. 
they do not seem to realize that a strong belief is as efficacious as a strong wish. The successful man believes in himself and in his ultimate success, and, paying no attention to little setbacks, stumbles, tumbles, and slips, presses on eagerly to the goal, believing all the time that he will get there. His views and aims may alter as he progresses, and he may change his plans or have them changed for him. But all the time he knows in his heart that he will eventually get there. He is not steadily wishing he may get there. He simply feels it and believes it, and thereby sets into operation the strongest forces known in the world of thought. The man who just as steadily believes he is going to fail will invariably fail. How could he help it? There is no special miracle about it. Everything he does, thinks and says, is tinctured with the thought of failure. Other people catch his spirit and fail to trust him or his ability, which occurrences he in turn sets down as but other exhibitions of his ill luck, instead of ascribing them to his belief and expectation of failure. He is suggesting failure to himself all the time, and he invariably takes on the effect of the auto-suggestion. Then again, he by his negative thoughts shuts up that portion of his mind from which should come the ideas and plans conducive to success and which do come to the man who is expecting success because he believes in it. A state of discouragement is not the one in which bright ideas come to us. It is only when we are enthused and hopeful that our minds work out the bright ideas which we may turn to account. Men instinctively feel the atmosphere of failure hovering around certain of their fellows, and on the other hand, recognize something about others which leads them to say, when they hear of a temporary mishap befalling such as a one, oh, he'll come out of it all right somehow, you can't doubt him. It is the atmosphere caused by the prevailing mental attitude. Clear up your mental atmosphere. There is no such thing as chance. Law maintains everywhere. And all that happens, happens because of the operation of the law. You cannot name the simplest thing that ever occurred by chance. Try it and then run the thing down to a final analysis, and you will see it as the result of the law. It is as plain as mathematics. Plan and purpose, cause and effect. From the movements of the worlds to the growth of the grain of mustard seed, all the result of law. The fall of the stone down the mountainside is not chance. Forces which had been in operation for centuries caused it, and back of that cause were other causes, and so on until the causeless cause is reached. And life is not the result of chance. The law is here too. The law is in full operation whether you know it or not. Whether you believe in it or not, you may be the ignorant object upon which the law operates and bring yourself all sorts of trouble because of your ignorance of or opposition to the law. Or you may fall in with the operation of the law, get into its current, as it were, and life will seem a far different thing to you. You cannot get outside of the law by refusing to have anything to do with it. You are at liberty to oppose it and produce all of the friction you wish to it. It doesn't hurt the law, and you may keep it up until you learn your lesson. The law of thought attraction is one name for the law, or rather, for one manifestation of it. Again, I say, your thoughts are real things. They go forth from you in all directions, combining with thoughts of like kind, opposing thoughts of different character, forming combinations, going where they are attracted, flying away from thought centers opposing them. And your mind attracts the thought of others which have been sent out by them con consciously or unconsciously but it attracts only those thoughts which are in harmony with its own. Like attracts like, 
and opposite repel opposites in the world of thought. If you set your mind to the keynote of courage, confidence, strength, and success, you attract to yourself thoughts of like nature, people of like nature, things that fit in the mental tune. Your prevailing thought or mood determines that which is to be drawn toward you, picks out your mental bedfellow. You are today setting into motion thought currents which will in time attract toward you thoughts, people, and conditions in harmony with the predominant note of your thought. Your thought will mingle with that of others of like nature and mind, and you will be attracted toward each other, and will surely come together with a common purpose sooner or later, unless one of the other of you should change the current of his thoughts. Fall in with the operation of the law. Make it a part of yourself. Get into its currents. Maintain your poise. Set your mind to the keynote of courage, confidence, and success. Get in touch with all the thoughts of that kind that are emanating every hour from hundreds of minds. Get the best that is to be had in the thought world. The best is there. So be satisfied with nothing less. Get into partnership with good minds. Get into the right vibrations. You must be tired of being tossed about by the operations of the law. Get into harmony with it. And that concludes chapter 16 and the end of our book, Thought Vibration or the Law of Attraction in the Thought World.